Hi everyone, in this video we're going to do a two sample t-test using the TI-84 calculator. So before we even read the question, let me show you where the command is in the calculator so you can actually perform the two sample t-test. So the first thing you want to do is press the button here that says stat. So I'm going to press the stat button. Then you want to go over to where it says tests. So you can use the right arrow key to navigate your way to tests. And we're looking for a two sample t-test. So we're going to go down here and then just go down to four and press enter. Let me do that one more time. So first you press stat. Then you have to use these arrow keys here to navigate your way to tests. And then go down to where it says two sample t-test. Okay, and then go ahead now and press enter one time. We have two choices. We have data and we have stats. Data is if you actually have like a list of the numbers and stats is when you have a summary of the data, which is what we have here. So I'm going to go over to stats with the arrow key and then press enter one time. Okay, let's read the question now. So a sample of 10 regions in New England. So that's going to be our first sample size. So I'm going to go down to N1 and enter the number 10 and then hit enter had a mean violent crime rate of 3.51. So that's the sample mean. That's our first X bar. So let's go up here to X bar and enter 3.51 and then press enter. And a standard deviation of 0.81. That's the sample standard deviation. Notice the words are in the same sentence, sample and standard deviation. That's what tells us to use T. Basically, when you're doing a hypothesis test for one mean or two means, if they give you the population standard deviation, then you want to use Z. If they don't, then you want to use T. Then we have a sample of 12 regions in the Rocky Mountains. That's 12. Had a mean violent crime rate of 3.87. That's our other sample mean. Whoops, I messed up. That's our 10. <laughs> our 12 is down here. And 3.87 is up here, so 3.87, we're good. And a standard deviation of 0.94, so 0.94. So it's not always given to us uh, in the question in the same way that it's in the calculator. So it's really easy to like plug in the wrong stuff. Let me just double check my work. So x bar sub 1 is 3.51, that's our first mean, yep. Our first standard deviation is 0.81, yep. Our first sample size is 10. Then x bar sub 2 is 3.87. Our other standard deviation is 0.94, and our second sample size is 12. Okay, let's go down a little bit more. You want to leave it at no, underpooled. Uh, for all practical purposes, leave it there. The last sentence should tell us the correct symbol. Do the data that the violent crime rate, do the data indicate that the violent crime rate in New England is lower than in the Rocky Mountains? So lower, so we're gonna go up here, and we're gonna pick less than, then press enter, and then we're good. And then go to calculate and press enter. And here we have the results. Notice they give us in the problem our alpha, our 0.01. So what you would do next is you would compare your p-value to your alpha. So if the p-value is smaller than alpha, then you reject the null hypothesis and you have enough evidence to support your alternate hypothesis, which is less than. If the p-value is bigger than alpha, then you fail to reject the null hypothesis and you don't have enough evidence to support your claim. So in this case, our p-value is the p here, 0.17, and it is bigger than alpha, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that the violent crime rate in New England is lower than in the Rocky Mountains. I hope this video has been helpful. That's it.